magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Medyo na nilipag na po ako sa mga nakikita po mukha kasi di po alam kung saan kayo nanggagaling ng mga disiplina. Although I was informed, many of you would be what? Future seafarers, teachers, academicians, and owners of maritime schools. But anyway, thank you for inviting me, Jasper. Thank you very much for inviting me. And I hope you will learn something new about what I'm going to discuss. Because although I'm into maritime studies, mine is more of coming from the discipline of anthropology and archaeology. And by the way, my mentor is also at the back, Mr. Ray Sancha. So for today. So here's the abstract of this paper presentation to you this afternoon. We should not be surprised if many Filipinos would like to be what, seafarers or who would uh, take up seamanship and seafaring or even our ancestors were capable seafarers themselves. Evidences of seafaring and boat building have, uh, have been unearthed by archaeologists, including myself, while anthropologists have documented traditional boat building technology that has been handed down through generations. And this paper, just to make you a little bit more excited what I'm going to uh, discuss, this is entitled The Barodo da Banca and the Banangay. Because I know you, you, you would know very well about boats, fairly enough. Uh, where I'm coming from would be a, a bit of a different story. I think you can just have to focus over here. So why am I including here the map of Southeast Asia? Because the Philippines is part of Southeast Asia and many would like to believe a bit in my, uh, shall we say, in my circle or of uh, the discipline of archaeology, they would like to believe that the, uh, the Philippines was not important to the seafarers of long ago because it was occupying the south, uh, the eastern part of the, uh, shall we say, the Pacific area, so that nobody would like to venture in that part of the uh, region. But sad to say for them, and I'm very happy to uh, inform you, those who are here, that we were considered as important by all the seafarers. Why? Because it's another way of looking at the region because we complete the imaginary lay during the time. Kasi nga, tayo yung nasa easternmost, so pag iikot sila, kasi nung unang panahon, wala pang Indian, di ba? So pag iikot sila, kailangan lang nila sabayan yung mga trade winds and the car. And mind you, napaka-importante yun. Kaya pag uh, nandidiscuss ako sa ibang uh, forum, sinasabi ko na yung environmental conditions ng Pilipinas ay dapat natin isa puso dahil kung hindi, lulubog lahat ng bangka at bangko natin. technical glitch lang. So anyway, you can see very well on the other screen. Some examples, I'll show you how adept we are with riding Pangka or Barolo. The picture that you're seeing right now are, um, these are two kids, I think grade two or grade three, in the Agusan March in Mindanao. And instead of riding the tricycle, the bicycle, that's how they explain to me why they're using their barolo. Because they're going to school. So you go. You green building there is their school. And to reach that, because they live in the middle of the marsh, they have to take the barolo. And, and I really ask them, are you not afraid to ride the bank on your own? Sabi nila, 
It's just like riding a bicycle for you. Wala kami bisikleta kasi lahat kami tubig. So yung bangka sa kanila ay napaka-importante. And I don't know if you can see below, because it's a little bit uh, maliwana. These two kids are going to park their bangka together with the other bangka or maroto of the other student. And the school building is also uh, on a floating, shall we say, rock or platform. So that when the water goes up in the Agusan Marsh, then the hotel building will also go up. And then uh, at this time, the Agusan Marsh is taking in so much water because it's already the rainy season. So for them, even if it's too deep for us, for them, the, the Agusan Marsh is just another uh, area where they can use their boats. Then another one would be these boats. Again, you get to see them. One is in Punawan, and then another is in Bicol, in Alpan. And we can overload all those boats, but whether it's with an auto trigger or without the auto trigger. For us, it's just like riding a car, a bus, then again, this is an inter island boat that I found in Pilar, and they say it can go around as far as what they told me is as far as Maspate. And then we know you get to see there a, an outrigger boat that's flying in uh, northern Palawan. So, what are these? What am I trying to drive home uh, by showing you all these pictures? that we can all be what? Using different sizes and different forms of banka or both, and yet, it's just another ordinary form of transport each one. And these are again types of paroto, and they are going, one is in Punawan, I, I think you won't be very familiar with Punawan, but you will be familiar with Lolonga, largest prototype. So, dun yan. Noong panahon na yun, bago na, na huli si Lolong, nag-way pa doon. Sabi ko nga, kung buti nila hindi nawala yung aking arm. And then, the other one, the other uh, boat would be in the Agusan River, which is a fast-flowing river. And then eventually, later on, I'll be showing you more pictures about the Agusan River and why it is very important as far as uh, traditional and ancient boat building is concerned. And lastly, this is another uh, form of the use of the banka or the baroto, ginawang sampayan. Diba? Hindi ko na lang napakita na dyan din sila naglalaba. Pagpinsan. Kasi malinis na daw yung tubig sa Tunawan River. So, before I go on with my discussion, I'd just like to uh, be uh, be clear with how I use the word banka, baroto, and Bangka is a generic term used to refer to all types of food and foods. And then another form um, in terms of spelling is bangka. Sa Tagalog kasi bangka, diba? For others, and even in uh, some literature, it's called bangka with a C. Then baroto is also a generic term used to refer to the Dagao Tanu. And then all over the Philippines, you can hear people call this the Alpano differently. One would be Panoto of Beto among the Manuaon, and then the Bayoto among the Manuko. Then there's the Balangay. I know you're more familiar with the Balangay, but I seldom use the word Balangay. I use the word Utuan Po uh, to refer where it was uh, discovered. But Balangay is the term used to refer to the plant field edge peg boats that were found in Butuan and in other areas like Gudjana in Gulo. So, why is it very important in this As people considered as descended from the Austronesian speaking peoples, one of the things that these uh, Austronesian speaking peoples brought to the country, because they, they're not supposed to 
to be from this uh, archipelago, although there are two contentions when discussing the Australasian speaking peoples. One would be Peter Bell's Northern Origin and Solheim's Southern Origin. Pero kung gusto niyo pong malaman pa kung ano yung Australasian speaking peoples, you have to enroll in an archaeology school sa Pilipinas at this sa Unity of Menon. Kasi uh, hanggang ngayon, hindi pa po kami nagkakasundo kung ano po ba yung ginawa ng mga Australasiano sa ating sa Pilipinas. So some of the things that are more associated with the Australasian speaking peoples would be that they introduced agriculture or the cultivation of rice. And siguro kung may panahon pa lang sana ano yan, discuss. Alam niyo po ba kung kaya nagkaroon ng panay sa Pilipinas? Kasi sabi nga po ng isang profesor, kayong Pilipino, maliging kayo kumain ng bigas, pero hindi nyo alam kung kaya nagkaroon ng bigas sa Pilipinas o panay. So meron naman po tayong evidence of rice or panay in the Philippines. Uh, one would be around 3,000 years ago, meron ng evidence for rice. And there's now an ongoing research where I'm participating where we found grains of rice in a, an archaeological site in Cagayan province in the north. Aside from introducing agriculture or cultivation, they also brought in domesticated pigs, made pottery for the uh, surplus, and of course, the boats and maritime technology. Again, these are all what? Associated materials with maritime uh, activities. And then what we found in the archaeological records, the earliest uh, evidence for boats in the archaeological record would be this one. This is the Manolo jar. I think all of us know about this because it used to be uh, at the verso of the 1,000 peso hill. But, the original of this Manongol jar is at the National Museum. Wag kong kayong magsabi na wala sa atin yung original niya. Nandun po siya sa National Museum sa Kapanang Lahi. Why is the Manongol jar very important? Because it tells us about the use of the book and also our belief in afterlife. Kasi po yung namamangka dyan, yung patay, inadala siya sa kapinang buhay. Ba? So, yung loob po nung uh, manunggol dyan is full or contains human remains. So, it belongs around uh, 8th century AD po. Yun po yung kanya. Anak, 8th century AD pa BC po. So, medyo matanda na po yung uh, jar na yan. Then, another one would be this one is found in Patanes. Okay. The house is, uh, is just a reconstruction, and the one who reconstructed that would be Mr. Ray Sanchado, because we were a team that went there as early as 1995. But the bone shaped burials are really there, and we counted them, and we were even able to excavate one. So again, this is a bone shaped burial. Because we know it's a burial because it contains a human being. So, bakit kaya kailangan magkaroon ng uh, pangkapa? Again, because this is a, a coastal village and people would be what? looking towards the sea as part of their culture. Then, in Surigao, now to be the now, we also have the dugout coffins that resemble again the Barolo. So most of the evidences for the early use of boats in the Philippines would be as burial uh, markers or uh, containers until such time that we found this Panangay uh, or Wood One boats in Agusan, Northeastern Mindanao. It was in the 1970s when the 
and treasure hunters found something different from what they were used to finding, like the coffins. So they decided to inform the National Museum, and the National Museum went to Mindanao or to Atusan and decided to excavate or salvage or save the parts of the boat that was in that uh, area. And we can say that the rest is history because right uh, until today, we are still excavating um, other boats within the same archaeological site. So what did we find aside from the boat to say that these boats were used by people along the road? So some would be these paddles or oars, then they have wooden baits, then this slashing for the boat, yung arena pinyata, ano lang po yan, scientific name, then you can call it kao, mas madaling mo. Kasi yung kao, nilalagay na lang natin sa halo-halo ngayon, di ba? But the fibers were used by ancient Filipinos as slashing. So yung nasa mabang picture ko, pinapakita ko yung Paano tinatalinan yung ribs ng no, uh, balangay or good one po? So this is the first boat that was excavated by the National Museum and it was dated 320 AD. And I would like to uh, request from the, the, those who are here now uh, to refrain from using the 320 AD date because uh, it's shall we say, it's a sore thumb that comes out of the other dates that we have um, obtained through C-14 dating also. And also, that the associated materials do not point to the 4th AD uh, that we got from the earliest book. Then aside from that, from the 1970s to the 1990s, we have already uh, excavated three boats, so we call it boat one, boat one, two, and five. And then, they are not complete boats, but what is interesting to note there is that there is an absence of outfitters. So in the 1990s, again, through research, scientific research conducted by archaeologists and other uh, maritime people, they were able to reconstruct the boat that was excavated in Boot 1. So you get to see uh, in front of you a sample of the picture of how they were able to reconstruct um, the Boot 1 boat based on the incomplete uh, boat remains recovered in Abusan. Then again, Mr. Ray Sanchago decided to come up with this uh, chronology of how we, we develop boats through time. And then again, the, the materials or the tools being used by the early boat builders would only be very few. So, meron may dyan yung atcha, and then the stone pool, the gouge, and the ants. So later on, then from 1990, we decided to come to again require the Boot 1 boat excavation. So I did the, uh, I was the head of the team there that went sometime in 2012, although in 2001, I already started going to Boot 1 just to be able to continue the research on boats. Again, this is just to show you how Boot 1 looks like now because I'll be showing you some maps later on that Boot 1, during the time that it was known to our ancestors, it was made up of several islands and nobody would like to believe that. So what do we do when we conduct archaeological research? We cannot just do excavation right away. We have to do survey reconnaissance before we conduct excavation. So in this case, uh, I am with a geologist just to make sure that we will find the uh, ev geological evidences that we can say that one was either 
uh, made up of several islands or just one piece of uh, land connected to mainland Mindanao. So we did the excavation of Putuan Gold Fort. And, well, I don't know if we should be very happy about it, although I was a bit uh, sad because instead of just getting one boat in this uh, research, I was able to uncover two boats. So we had a bigger uh, excavation site. We had more people helping us to be able to expose the boats that we, uh, we were able to discover. Aside from the boats, we were also able to get materials that we can associate with uh, tools, like we have a wooden clamba, uh, then uh, these towels are so big compared to the, the one on the extreme right, which is the normal size of the towel. And again, a renga benyata, which, were, which was used for lashing. So this is an idea, just to give you an idea that when we do discover homes or archaeological remains, it's not the way you get to see it in, on exhibitions or in museums. So we still have to do so much research. So in this case, it's still an ongoing excavation now in Agusan because we're not yet done. So based on those uh, available remains of wood of the boats 4 and 9, we were able to reconstruct this. So this is now how uh, the archaeologists and the artist illustrator in the team would at least show you how the boats would look like and eventually this is how we have uh, projected the boats to have looked like when they were used. The original boat, the one that we're used to, would be the one at the bottom. And boat one boat nine is twice as big because uh, we have only uncovered half of the boat and we are already 15, almost 15 meters long. And uh, there was a time, sabi ng isang TV station, it's the mother boat, the mother ship. Sabi ko, hindi naman yan ship boat pa rin. Kasi it's a wooden one. And then it's still under the category of boats. Then why is it that I'm showing you again the good one boats, one, two, and five remains? Because we decided to come up with new dates. This is C14 dates that were obtained by my uh, colleague, Digaya uh, Naksina. She sent, uh, I think she sent the samples in the United States and then some also in Australia. And these are the newest dates for the boats. Boat 1 would be around 10th century, boat 2 is 9th century, 8th century, and then boat 4, 5, and 9 would be 9th century. So how do we know that they are in that particular time? Because aside from that, we decided also to um, interview other people, other knowledgeable people in the area, whether they knew how to conduct, uh, whether they knew how to build large boats. So in this case, being an anthropologist, I became that, shall we say, makulit na anthropologist because I had to ask, these are Manobo, uh, Manobo from Agusan, uh, the Norte, Agusan, the Sur, and then another one would be from the Agusan Marsh. And they all told me that they were not keen or they, they did not have any memory of building large boats. Because for them, the Agusan Marsh, the um, Agusan River is not good for large boats because it's a fast flowing river. What they would like to use more would be rafts and smaller boats, which they call Maroto. Again, uh, this is a group of uh, indigenous peoples within the area of Agusan that I decided also to ask again, just to make sure whether they can build the uh, Palangai or the Agusan boats. 
again, the, the answer was negative because they said that they have no use for bigger boats. What they would rather use would be rafts in cases that they cannot use their paroto. Then this one, these are the boats that were made in 2010, and one of them, the one that is a little bit smaller, when uh, trying to practice there at the area Samanila Bay. So what are these boats? These are actual size replica of the Putman boats. And the group of Arcaldes, yung Kaya uh, ng Pinoy group, decided to use the, the, this replica of the boats to sail all the way to the southern waters of Vietnam. Why is this important? Because this is an, uh, what we call experimental archaeology. Because the Butuan boats were known as just rivering boats and we tried to say that it can cross the sea, the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea as early as the 10th century. But nobody would believe that except for the Chinese who had uh, actual documentation of the sailings of this, uh, of the early Filipinos who went to China and to Vietnam, which was then called as Champa. So everyone uh, was, what, doubting Thomas's because they thought that the, those boats cannot sail or cannot even flow. And so what they did, what I did to the team was he imported the Sakabanja boat makers from Tawi Tawi. And then there's this guy who's wearing a t-shirt. Paano ba yan? The one with in gray shirt. He's, he's actually a, uh, a modern day ship captain. And before we started the project, he said that I don't think that the boat is going to tow. Sabi ko, bakit naman sir? Eh, kasi hindi siya mo ang tulungan. Because we haven't seen a boat this big that can really flow. Anyway, sabi namin, oh, uh, sige. Let the Sama Bajau boat builders do their work and then let's find out later on. And again, even the Samo Banjao boat builders was, were uh, asking us what was the reason behind and we wanted, we told them, we'd like to show everyone that even early Filipinos knew already how to sail in those turbulent seas of the West Philippine Sea. So for several months, they stayed there at, saan ang babo ako? At, doon sa may anayan. Sa my PICC Folk Arts Theater, there's an area there where they constructed a, a simulated community for the Samo Banjao. So they stayed there for quite some time and they were able to again do a replica of the Bukwan boat using those tools below. Wala pong, uh, very sophisticated, shall we say, high technology, yung sinasabi natin, high tech na mga gamit na yun yung ginamit ng mga sama matcha. What they had was the hatcha, the bingo, and now they also introduced the uh, lagali and katang or the playground. So, so this is how they did the replica of the boat. And this is how it looked like when it was finished. And after that, it went around the Philippines. Nasakyan ko po yan. Tapos pinagtatawanan kami. Hindi ko po alam kung yung games may sariling pato na nandyan sa Manila Bay. Basta may isang uh, parang school vessel dyan. Tapos tinitignan kami kasi parang nalang po kami langaw compared to the big size of the ship. Pero yun naman, hindi naman kami binungko. Kaya lang natatawa sila kasi nga pinag-aaralan kung paano gagamitin yung sale. But again, we were able to uh, debunk the notion that it's not going to flow. 
that it cannot sail because it was able to sail around the Philippines and then around uh, Southeast Asia, tapping in some of the ports where we had that they know of the past tense, we had interaction of trade and exchange. So, nandiyan po si President Ramos kasi isa siya sa mga benefactors ng project ni Mr. Hart Bates together with the Sama Pajaro Builders. So, bakit natin pinapakita to? Because during the period between the 10th and the 13th centuries, it was the whole period for both Southeast Asia and China for the ceramics ceramic trade between West Asia and China through Southeast Asian ports. And then but one during the time was already considered as an independent quality. And but one herself was already engaged in trade and exchange. So how did we know that we had trade and exchange with other countries? Because we have this we have all these ceramic pieces, beads, and maybe we exchange our gold. Kailang before I go into the uh, other materials that were being exchanged, this is just to give you an idea of how would one looked like some thousands of years ago. So between 6,000 to 1,000 years ago, in the upper, upper left us, uh, Ma would already give you an idea that Good One was made up of several islands. And the uh, Agusan River was not just one river channel during the time. And then between 1,500, that changed uh, because there are uh, fault lines that bisect the Agusan. So if any one of you would go to Agusan, I do but one, you find out that the whole city is just a big flat land, except for the area where you get to see the airport. Because the airport, the one beside the airport, belongs to a different geologic makeup. Yun ay isang remnant ng isang islang lumuhog na, o nag-fuse na together with the rest of Budwan. And right now, Budwan is part of mainland Mindanao. Yung nasa malaking mama po na nakikita nyo, yun yung itsura ng Budwan. And the Agusan River is now where it is how we see it now. But in, shall we say, 6,000 years ago, the Agusan River was on the west side. And along the way, it was able to inundate and then uh, Expose parts of the area. Kaya nga, meron mga nakabunan. And one of them would be the Budwan Homes. So going back to the uh, materials that we found in Budwan, aside from these trade wear ceramics, which are being considered as some of the oldest, okay, the best pieces are the gold pieces, but for archaeologists, we go with even the smallest pieces as long as we get to see some pictures that we think would add to the research of, of the research of our, our colleagues. So we have Vietnamese dish, aside from the Chinese uh, ceramics, rainwear balls, again, uh, Chinese pieces, and these ones. Uh, before they, they don't care about this much, but being the anthropologist in me, I have to include this because it gives us an idea of what? Religious beliefs. Kasi dapat, itong dalawang ceramics na to, these are thigh ceramics, na nagpukuto ng ulo. So may two contentious issues dyan, whether na sisira lang siya, or talagang tinatanggal kasi kinukuha ng mga buntis daw, ko alam kung may gano'n pa yung alam pero ito yung paniniwala kasi these two figurines are supposed to be holding babies in their bosoms so nawawala yung ulo and then the one below is a wooden image again and then uh, if you look very well its, it's hands are clasped in on its breast na hindi natin ginagawa so saan kaya siya gamit? 
So, pwede yung uh, pag-ilay nila yun nga. And aside from that, we get to see these earthenware crucibles that we had an X-ray for that. Uh, X-ray fluorescent spectrometry just to find out what are all those uh, colored things that are adhering to it. So far, the biggest or the highest element present would be copper. So where they used to make copper or bronze objects. Again, copper and bronze, you must have tin, and tin is not present in the Philippines. So that means it was important. And of course, the gold. Gold is very abundant in Asusa. And there was even a time that for so small pieces, pinapamigay lang ng mga nakakakuha. Sabi ko sayang, hindi pa ako pinapanganak mo. But these are some of the uh, molds that were used to create beautiful objects, beautiful ornaments that are uh, that contemporary people are getting created about. So this is just to give you an idea how they eat the pine of gold. So magbubuka sila, tapos ano yung mga sa loob kasi ikutin niya yung parang kilabo. And then at the center you get the gold uh, specks. So what did we do or what did we trade in return? So what I found in the archaeological record would be cinnamon and to a certain extent sabi ng mga manobo beeswax. There were other materials like nothing we get to find from the archaeological record. But we don't have um, plants now of nothing. But for cinnamon it's still grown in uh, one. Then we also have beads. Uh, the one that you get to see that is um, with an arrow is a very rare bead. It's called a mutisana, and not everyone can hold that. Usually it's associated with the Indonesians. Then another type of uh, ceramics would be this uh, Persian and Asian ceramics. Actually, it's not under Asian ceramics. These are different because they don't fit the, uh, the Chinese ceramics or the Thai ceramics. And these are similar to the ones found in Thailand. Of course, the local paths would, that would say or would tell us that they really were in that place to be uh, staying there for a much longer time. Okay, more uh, battery and then uh, net sinkers. And this is how Mr. Ray Santiago um, tried to capture how the Butuan bowl was used also as a family bowl plying the river. And then later on, we had to add the same because we know we can ply the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea. Again, the question now is, did we lose our ability to create or to build poles that are quite big? I don't think so. Because this picture was taken a few years back only, and we still get to see people or boat building, boat builders, creating or building boats as big as this one, or on the right side would be a small marobo. So, ako po ay the National Museum, ito na po yung paglat ko. So, if you are um, around the area, please visit the National Museum because it's one of, uh, it is the leading institution in terms of research in archaeology and other uh, branches of science. And then we have uh, branches all over the country from Batanes in the north down to Bulo and in between, of course. Then again, uh, one of the planned uh, parts that I'm part of, and uh, I hope you will also be part of this later on, is to create a maritime heritage park in Butuan to safeguard the boats. Kasi hanggang ngayon is privately owned, I mean the land is privately owned, so they can do anything. And we would like to later on uh, enshrine the area sa UNESCO World Heritage is. But it's a long shot and we have so far been doing work for the last, what, three years? 
So it's still a long way to go, but we have already purchased uh, from the 16 hectares that we're trying to purchase, we have already purchased three hectares because the funds would come from the national government. Tapos we love the coming of the Spaniards. Because by 1521, did we really lose our capability of doing or building traditional tools? Hindi pa rin po. This is a, uh, an artist tradition of a shipyard in the Beacon region. What is a real there would be uh, the banka and then the shipyard. But uh, the artist reconstructed how the galleon would have burned there because it, uh, there is a three-meter anchor in the archaeological site. And then what happened when, when the Spaniards came over to the Philippines? No, we didn't die. Uh, I am cautioning people in saying that they were discovered by Mr. Magellan. Kasi nandito naman tayo, di ba, nag-i-exist na tayo kahit wala si Magellan. So, nagkita po tayo. Uh, Magellan saw the Philippines and we saw him and we continued to coexist. So this is just to give you an idea of what happened in an area that uh, the Spaniards visited uh, when they came to the Philippines. Kasi ito po, uh, picture ito, ay ginawa with um, source of oil in mind and the shipyard or the astilleros in mind. So what did we show the Spaniards? That we, we know, uh, we have knowledge of metal smelting. Smelting is different from smelting because we transform the iron ore or the bato into a metal object. Then we know how to sweep and we can build boats. That is why Bicol is very prominent among the Spaniards because we know how to build galleons. Hindi na po yung nakahaka. And we have all the materials to support the construction of galleons from the trees down to the uh, uh, fuel which is comprised of your mangrove, the coal, and the coal. So with that, the hands and